Yeah. All right. So, um, boop, 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 boop. screen share. Can everyone see my screen? No. Yes, we do. You do? Yes, we do. So you can see all the Pocahontas there? Yes. So yes. these um, Pocahontas images here, these are really good for hair. So uh, Queen, if you like, I just typed in Pocahontas hair and you can find all those kind of things. Um, there's some really good things, um, really good reference there. And even doing highlights and things like that. Um, just go back to this one. Um, and you can just hear like how it's sort of bending around her body and flowing in the wind. There's lots of others, but I can't seem to see them here. Um, yeah, so that's good reference. Always, you know, always use Google. It's there. It's good for reference. Those ones with Rapunzel. I think that's Rapunzel. Or is it? Oh, no, I can't tell. They all look the same. Uh, but there's some great reference there. So we will do some of that. Um, stop sharing. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> uh, sorry, I've got stuff popping up on both of my screens. So let's do, we'll start, let's start off with hair since we're just talking about it. So let's start off with drawing a, a head. And we'll do that advanced head. So we're going to do the circle. Try and get a nice circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then draw. I'm going to do the head slightly turned, sort of in three quarter. So this is where my jaw and my chin are going to be down there. And then the side of the jaw here comes up sort of near your ear. That's going to be about halfway around this circle. So I've got my ear, my jaw, in my head, I'm just going to rub out the bottom of this circle. There we go. So let's zoom in a little bit. Okay. So this ear, put a little bit of detail on the inside, a little. Um, the ridge at the top there, the little bump you have. Well, on which ear am I going to do this one here? Little bump in there, and then the bottom part, and then you have some lines on the inside as well. You don't have to put too much detail on that because you may cover it with hair. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, now from the ear, yeah, not completely straight, slightly curved is the line for the eyes. And you put them in with just a really light circle for now. This one being a little bit smaller, squished up, squished this way, so that the eye is smaller. And then sort of imagine where those eyebrows are gonna be above the eye and then they're going to come down to be the nose bridge of the nose roughly which is roughly halfway down between the chin and the eye line to the about there so that's going to be the bottom of the nose and the nostril But I get a bit closer to that so you can see. It's not quite clear, but I sort of get the idea. Bring it down, end of the nose, sort of like a little square on the end of the love heart. And then we're going to um, put the shape in the eyes. 
So I think I've told you before, I'm just scrolling over here for a second. So instead of drawing a circle for the eyes or even an almond shape for the eyes, what you should do is think of that almond shape, but you do five strokes. One, two, three. And then if the nose is on this side, you do a short one. So four and five. And then you get the, the pupil, the colored part of the eyes fits within there and then the iris. So we've got where our circles are, where the eyes, so we know where the eyes are sort of gonna be. So now you can draw those shapes in and you can start to curve them off a bit as long as you can think of those angles. One, two, three at the top. Then the other side, one, two, three. And then the two at the bottom, the smallest one, this one, is always closest to the nose. So the small and then the long, and sort of join them up. Give them a little curve, small and long. And then I'll add in the pupil, which is just a circle, the iris is a circle. And then you see, sort of see here how I did the circle goes up the top. That's because if you actually um, look at your eye, close your eye, actually if you can move your eye when it's open, you can see the line at the top and sort of the bag you get under the bottom there. Um, but if you close your eye very gently, just touch your eyelid, you can feel the eyeball, which is the sphere that your eye is. And that curve at the top, is um, the line that you'll see up here. So you get like a crease at the top. Even, even if you, you keep doing that, you can feel your the bone of your brow um, and you can follow that around to it becomes your cheekbone. And that's actually the eye socket in the skull. So you have these big holes in your skull and that's where your eyes fit in and the muscles and the, um, the facial muscles and the eyelids hold your eyes in your face. So you can draw those in too, if you need to. Um, but you can you know, add some eyelashes to that. So like lots of little lines, top and bottom, or just a shape if you want it to look like a bit more cartoony. <clears throat> that looks really dark on the camera there. Oops. But anyway, so let's continue doing those eyes, fixing them up. Are you right there, Sergio? <laughs> you look like, show me what you've got. Are you having trouble? Mm, can you hold it closer? It's looking all right. That's good. I think you just need to rub out the curve um, of the circle. That way, that's a massive mask, a massive chin. I think you can bring your nose down a bit on that one. Um, so what I was gonna do next is just show the, the bit where your brow sticks out. So you can then draw the eyebrow in. And then draw the eyebrow in the other side as well. So a bit thicker in the middle and it can thin out. Some people have eyebrows like that. Some people have thick eyebrows. Some people have bushy eyebrows. Some people have no eyebrows. And then under the eye, you wanna sort of bring it out a bit for the cheek. Cause your cheek sticks out 
as you go three quarter, sort of come, I'm trying to <laughs> do the opposite in the camera, so it's this side, um, comes in to the eye and then out again for the cheek. And then comes down the face, down towards the chin. Okay, we'll do mouth quickly and then um, we'll get onto the hair. I just put a little shading in up there, um, not too much. Okay, so on the mouth, you can sort of just draw a small circle or oval where you sort of want the lips to go. And once you're happy with the sort of shape and size, then you can put some detail in. So I might, <clears throat> might start with a little V on the top. I don't know if you can see that. It's not really gonna get in focus here, but just here. Little curve there, which is the little bit between your top lip. We've got the little V right on the top under your nose. Bring that lip down either side. And then start with another little V underneath that, the top lip, and then take that back to the side. So that's the top lip. And then the bottom lip, we're gonna do another little curve, but upside down this time, and then curve that around. So I'll give my rather full lips. Um, I might show her cheekbone, a little shading for her cheekbone. On the other side, so you see like her cheekbone fits in there. Um, even some shading on her eye from the top because her eyelid's covering. Okay, okay. Now for the hair. So we wanna find sort of a line at the top where the hair is gonna grow from, even if it's gonna be falling down in front of her face, we're still gonna have this line. And that comes back to a point where it goes back a little bit, not so much as on my head because I'm going bald. It goes back a little bit and then it comes forward around the temple, which is just above your eye. And then it comes down to the front of the ear. <clears throat> Try to angle that a bit, and it didn't work. Okay. We'll come out a bit. Because what I want to do now. It's depending on whatever kind of hair you want to do. The next step, like when we start anything, I draw a shape. So I'm going to think of the hair. If we want to do a hair like those Hunter's ones we're looking at, maybe I'm just going to sort of draw it. Maybe it's coming out and blowing out this way. Maybe there's a bit more of a twist in it. Hang on. It's coming down a bit and twisting. So that bit's going up that way. Twisting and then maybe it's fanning out. So you see that shape? So the hair is going to be coming sort of from here and then twisting up this way. 
going down and then up, and then sort of becoming this fan shape. Um, I'm actually putting her neck might be good too. Shoulders just so get an idea of where things are going to go. <coughs> you could do hair falling in front of her face as well. Uh, maybe she's got a part here. Maybe this bit sort of coming, other bits coming down. So I'm just going to rub out the top of her head now because I sort of know where all that hair is going to come from. Don't need to so much see that bit. And then you can just start like I did before, start from up here. Now I have no hair coming from this section. Might have one little bit sticking out that's a little doesn't stick to the shape, but then the other bits might curve down. You can have to draw all the lines. Just make it sort of fit. Maybe she's got a long bit coming from here as well. This one just hangs in front. Other long bits coming down. And my base bits are curving up. The reason you want to draw these lines in is to give the hair a sense of motion so it looks like it's flowing one way or the other. from at the parts. So just sort of have a play and put a little bit in and don't like it. You, know, you can always change it up. When it's at the end there, it's sort of like when we're doing feathers and things, you can do some all clumped together or some just loose. You want to make it sort of make it feel like it's swirling around. And then same with the fringe part. Yeah, it's all coming out of these areas. Again, we can make some clumping together. Come out like that. And then you know, some random ones. See the lines are trying to turn over a bit darker. <clears throat> and like when we were doing, I don't know if we did hatching, but you can make these bits do lots of lines. It's almost coloring in. And then leave a bit and then color in another section or we'll do lots of lines together so it looks like it's colored in. And what that does is makes it look like 
just going to shine. So you could do that with color. Um, or you could just do it with pencil. So she might have, it might be very dark in the middle. And then she's got a, the lights hitting her hair. Just there. And smudge those edges a bit so that like they blend in a bit more. And then she's got these sort of nice highlights in her hair. <clears throat> How are you going, Liam? How's your hair? <laughs> the look on your face. <laughs> oh, big tail. I thought you drew horns. Okay, big tails. <laughs> so, yeah, with that, you can do, I'll just move this one for a second. Um, big tails or curly. Um, like curly curls. <laughs> you can draw that shape, say it's in a short little ponytail or something, but if you want it twisted, you can show that by doing the, the hairs sort of twisting around. So they sort of come around here and go around the back and come around here. So it shows a little bit like that. Or <clears throat> you can plan it out from the beginning and say, well, I want it to go there but I want it to have big clumps. So you sort of think of those shapes where you want these curls to be, maybe getting smaller. And then behind the, you know, so it's coming down this way and then it's gonna go around that way. And then it's gonna come back down you know, this way. Actually, no, sorry, it should go the other way. I messed it up. This is the hair all curling around this way. And then it's going to come around and then back down. Oh, that was right, what I was doing. So then it's going this way. And then this one's going back around the front. And then you have another bit at the back coming back down. It's coming down, and then this one's going to the front. Does that make sense? Um, and then you could just have like a little curly bit at the end. So as we're drawing little boxes <coughs> periodically down <coughs> the length of where you want the hair to go. Um, now, if you want to do it really flat and cartoony, you could just find the shape, that sort of ponytail shape. And just leave it like that, you can, or just you know, break up the end. Do one like that. So there's three different ways that you could do a little ponytail or something. Um, same with um, a bun or something like that. Um, you can just draw. Draw the shape of the bun. So this is the head. This is the bun. And then you can just draw some lines of the, the hair in there. It looks like a ball of wool. You do like a, a knitting needle through it. Or a, or a cat's paw playing with it. But yeah, that's how you do like a bun on someone's head. Okay, I'll give you a couple of minutes to catch up with those if you're trying to write, draw notes. Let me pull this out a bit more. Um, and then <clears throat> we will move on. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll fix my 
There we go, so you can see all of them. So next we're gonna do Smilodon as per Liam's request. And we'll do some hair on it so we can sort of do the same kind of things. We're not gonna give it pigtails or ponytails or anything, but maybe hair on its cheeks, on its tail, on its back, <clears throat> its elbows and things like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, has everyone got that? Valerie Queenie, can I take that away? Yes. Okay. All right. New piece of paper. So, Smilodon. I think I'm, I'm trying to picture one in my head because um, I don't have reference here at the moment. So I'm just going to picture it doing a pose, maybe, maybe leaping. So I'm going to start off with the with the head. Yeah, like that. <laughs> head. Body, well, that's the not the whole body, it's just the chest and the pelvis. Maybe I'll do a big, big paw there and a smaller paw there. This one I did it really big because it's closer, it's like coming at you like that. That hand's really big because it's close to you, so it's foreshortening. And these legs going back, and they're going to be small because they're further away. Put in the arms. Actually, it should be, don't copy that. I forgot the actual hand part. And this one, I'm not going to draw the bones this, I'm sort of going to draw that where the elbow is there. It's more full shortened like that on the shoulder. So I'm going to change those feet a bit. Oh, no, I won't. I'll leave the feet. Leave the feet like that. Actually, yes, I'm going to have it slightly crossed. So the feet are almost on top of each other like that. So it's going to make it look thinner as it goes down. It's getting cold. Okay, everyone got that? You almost. So I'm going to draw the facial features and roll out some of these sketchy lines. Um, so I'm going to have a sort of open mouth, that kind of thing. So I get the sort of figure out where its nose is going to go, nose in the front of its mouth. So sort of like that, sitting on its head and its eyes. and get its open mouth. Rub out that circle. Liam. Yeah. I also remember it has really long teeth. Yeah. The they're gonna they're gonna come in next. But we need to draw the mouth to know where the teeth go. Okay. 
Okay, so I'll move in a bit closer to the head now. What about that information on the inside? Okay, we could do the an ear pointing back. Find out where the nose is actually going to go within that area. Then it's got big incisors to the pointy teeth, fangs. I'm going to make sure they're roughly the same size. One is going to be small, slightly smaller than the other one but I'm gonna sort of fit up in there together. We can draw a little brow. So in the eye. Little highlight, and then speak. Sorry, I'm with that jaw is going, so you can um, add a few teeth along the side. the tongue, the roof of the mouth, it's just going to be lines. So I'm just adding little details now, like the brows, little hair, um, nostrils in the nose. There's some little hairs on top. Uh, maybe some hairs on the the ear or a ridge to show that. Um, the side of the ear, and then hair on the inside. So it just be a series of lines and tufts, um, and then even on the side of the head, maybe something that goes up like that. But I'm actually going to draw that in as a jagged line. Give it some fluff on its cheeks. Okay, so that's the head sort of done. We're going to move down the body to the chest part. I'm just going to sort of find where that middle of the chest is here. That's one side. That's the rib cage there. Bring the belly down. And the back. Just give it some shape. And I can make the chest a little fluffy. Mm -hmm.
And then I'm gonna move down to the legs. So I'm going to thicken out these legs to the this one first because it's on top and that one is behind. So I'll get the thigh and then the calf down to the heel and then down to the foot. This is very small, so I hope you can see. Doesn't matter too much because they are going to be really small. Sorry, I had that up a bit high. I'm just going to put the other one in, following those rough shapes, but have it a little stretch, a little more stretched out. Then give it a little bit of a tail. Little fuzzy tail. Okay. So that's what we've got so far. We just have to do the arms and the big claws. So they got four and then a the fifth one that's about down here. That thumb is moved all the way down. So you're probably not gonna see it on this one, but we will see it on that one. For this one, let's start by up on the hand. We'll sort of draw in <clears throat> the fingers as blocks. There's one two, three, and four. And I did the ends like that because that's where I'm then going to draw the claws coming out of. So the little fingers. Um, and then sort of find the middle of these and you can do the big claw sticking out. And where it's touching the finger, you can do some lines like hair because it's breaking through the fur on the finger. And then do the next one. It should look something like that. A few claws sticking out. And you could draw, if you can see them, a little pad under the fingers. I'm only going to see that one. And then the pad on the hand, the palm. Which again, you probably won't see a lot of. That's the pad. Make the elbow a bit hairy. Okay. 
How are you going, Liam? Good? Okay. Any questions about how I did anything? No? Sergio, any questions? No, you're good? You've got all that? Okay. So now we're gonna do that same thing on this hand. So I'll zoom in a little bit. Get in there. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the thumb this time. Thumbs down here. And I'll do a little claw on that. And then we're gonna to come up and segregate where all these fingers are on two. Three, four. See how they got smaller as they went around? Because they're turning around from the camera or from the viewer. Put in the big claw. One, two, Four. So, because the uh, fingers are turning around so big, I can't see the fingers anymore, just the claws. And again, you can draw those pads in if you think they're going to be visible. And then bring that back down. The air, elbow, do some hair. There we go. It's cool, you man. It's cool. There's a lot of lines in there. You might need to, to clean that up with like a felt tip pen or something so you can rub out some of those lines. If you get too many lines in there, it becomes a bit confusing. Yeah, no, that's good. It's good, I like it. Good job. So you can always go back and add a little shading here and there. Or if you want to give him some color um, or, or white areas even. So I might color in the bits that I don't want white. So I might give him a white chest and a white belly. That's pretty good, Liam. Yeah, nice, nice claws. Maybe I want the ends of his feet to be white. Top of his head. <coughs> Excuse me. Out. You could do a little bit of detail on his teeth too. A few little lines to show that they're actual teeth or cracks or something. Yeah, we didn't give him any whiskers either. Maybe over there. Uh, 
How did you get Valerie? Did you? Hang on, who showed me? Valerie, you didn't show me yours, didn't you? I don't know. Oh, cool. I like the eye. That's good. Good job. Queenie, how did you go? Still doing it? Are you done, Sergio? He just turned off, it's left. <laughs> okay. All right. So we've only got a couple of minutes left. Let's do something else. Um a lot of eraser dust. <clears throat> okay, let's do. Uh, let's draw another head. We won't bother about the face this time. We just draw a simple head. Like that. You can put in the eyes and things if you want. Just putting a really simple face like that. Neck and shoulders. So let's do big fluffy hairdo like that show where the hairline's coming down maybe around the ear So if that was someone's hair, what do you think it would look like if we grabbed all the hair on this side and put a scrunchie or something around it? So I think the scrunchie is gonna be here. How would you change that hair? So all of this is gonna be now be a ball and all of this is going to start being pulled down into here. So I might do that in a different color just so you can do it in a pen. So I have the scrunchie here. I still want to keep it lumpy and bumpy. Maybe it's coming from there. Like that. You see that? So we got all this, this hair and we hold it all in to make that little bump on the side. Maybe that's a little bit too big. So then you could do the same on this side. So I'll try that with a different color. So the hair is probably gonna get pulled down, do the scrunchie there on the other side. This hair is gonna get pulled down. And then this one's going to form another little bump on that side. Thank you. 
Um, yeah. So what we're doing about there is thinking about how the shape of something, you can change it by pinching it, grabbing it, and how to affect it. <laughs> I don't think you could do it with your hair, Liam. <laughs> All right, so let's do another one quickly. So we've got like two minutes. Another head. And neck and shoulders. And let's do, we'll do the hairline this time. So the curve at the top comes back towards the front again and then down towards the ear. Now, um, let's imagine this person had long hair. It's going straight down, maybe a part on the side there. See how I'm not drawing it flat to the head? They've come up a little bit because your hair sits above. I mean, look at my hair, it's, it's, it's huge. <laughs> it sits right on the top of my head. Um, so this one's going to go over the top and down the other side. Keep it straight down. Now, this bit here could be pushed back behind the ear, so it falls down behind the shoulder. But this bit could um, it could have the fringe part tucked behind the ear. Pardon me. So it's falling down in front of the face giving her a bit of a fringe um, and then, you know, sort of hanging down there. But this bit could be in front of her shoulder. So then sort of curving around. I was going to do another one, but we are out of time. Then, so what you could do is to imagine what if you pulled this hair up into ponytails the other side or a bun, how would that look? You can mess around with it. Or what if it was shorter? What if she had like a little bob? What would it look like if one side of her head was shaved? And this one too. What if one side or she had a shaved mohawk right down the middle and then her big puffy hair either side? Yeah, that's some homework for you. I know Liam will do it. <laughs> we are of time. Uh, we do are you know this is the last week of term two? So we're going to take a break and then we're going to return to term three. Just tell your parents to, uh, to look out for timetable for term three, okay? Um, if you can, just send, take a photo of your work and send it to Brilliant Kids. That really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to unmute everyone. Say goodbye to Mr. Evan. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's way too formal, goodbye. Liam. <laughs> goodbye. All right. I see you next time. Okay. Thank goodbye. you. Bye for now. Bye.